spoken lately. I haven't thought about flying for a long time. I have a dream that at that moment when I was alone above the clouds for a long time. I have dreamed of waking up in a room surrounded in blue and green grass for more years than I could dream of memory. I have a walked back into the past or scratched on the doors of my origins, where it all came from, since I held up that cape for the last time. Return to Kent Town 10th year anniversary edition is a revised version of Andy N's first poetry book. The book can be purchased from Amazon and it contains numerous additional material. Spoken Label. Hi, it's Andy N from Spoken Label. A spoken label was originally set up at the beginning of 2016 and records show it started off really as a one-off podcast chatting to writers, poets and artists. Over time it became monthly, then weekly and occasionally nowadays it goes on back to a more regular basis. To date I've done over 330 sessions and I'm always looking for new poets, writers, artists, singers, songwriters, general interesting creative people to come onto the podcast. You can find this on all the usual networks over Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Podbay and dozens of others. But it does have a central database of spoken label, which is all one word, dot bandcamp.com. Obviously now, to help me with the running costs of this podcast, I'm always grateful for any kind of donation to assist me with it. You can even do the donation through the Bandcamp page by putting in a fee to download one of the free podcasts or send it over to my PayPal to aen1mpo at yahoo.co.uk my email address again is aen1mpo at yahoo.co.uk. Enjoy the podcast. Take care. Bye. Spoken later. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I am also being published by Heist Now. Um, my book is Fruit Salad and Rocket Ships. And it is an autobiographical piece I've been writing for about six years, um, which has poetry from when I started performing spoken word when I was 18 um, up until what I've created now. Um, so I wanted to read you my first chapter. This will be the first time that it's been heard by people other than myself and Dee and my partner. <laughs> so uh, the first chapter is called Take Off and it is how this young neurodivergent non-binary person called Papillon um, is trying to escape their home and it's my my retelling of my uh, experience from youth. So I hope you enjoy. It is here we find ourselves at the doormat to a stranger, soon to be a friend. There is nighttime blue painted on the walls uh, of this tinfoil house. The house tries not to yawn, so to not knock itself to the ground is so desperately trying to stand upon. This is not a home of many colours, plenty of money, any worth. This house is weak at the knees, held up by the needs of those who live inside of it. Upon entering, shadows seep into the corners of the room. Blue paints itself into the skirting boards. The corridor ahead squeezes you as you pass through nearly breathless when it spits you out into the room called living. Here sits a silent girl playing with dust rabbits hopping across the fireplace, sitting dimly lit with warmth. The fire chuckles to keep her company. The girl smiles faintly at its auburn courage. Two steps forward and a sharp left, you stumble upon a kitchen and an argument. Two eyebrows shout at two sharp lips that raise themselves into smiles when needed at dinner parties. They love each other, the faces that take the night but it's hard to see in between the singing of anger that rattles the plates on the dinner table. Three turns to the right, five steps and a look upwards. You find a staircase seemingly untrodden, leading to a small wooden door painted purple. This, dear reader, is where they sit. 
hands folded in their lap, two wide eyes and a dainty button nose that twitches when they sniffle. This is Papillon. They sit, cross-legged and stern, staring with a yearn at the window who daren't be open in front of their feet. Papillon is reading of space and the wonders it entails. They have circled a star, named it Hope, and have put their shoes on for running. Here is the plan, they say, rubbing their hands in a shake. Before they wake, I will be gone. I've carved the cardboard shape and I have got my spacesuit on. In a rocket ship built from my tinfoil home, I will leave. And they will never know. Papillon counts the clock like letters spelling out an exit sign. At five minutes to eleven, Papillon hears the rumbling of snores between the floorboards. It's time. Papillon pauses. I will leave tonight. Papillon fills their rocket to the brim with fruit and vegetables. My nana says that an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Perhaps it shall keep my family at bay. Perhaps this can be my fuel for the journey. With naive wisdom and blind clarity, a sea of apples, oranges and greens fills their cardboard spaceship. Papillon climbs inside. There is silence in the room. Nothing. Papillon waits for what feels like lifetimes stacked upon each other, timelines growing longer than the shadows on their windowsill. Nothing. Papillon looks to the sky and mutters something of a wish. Nothing. Papillon stares with a cry at the stars who stare back at them. They sigh with a thousand light years of sorry. Nothing. Papillon bursts into a scream. The walls are folding in on them like origami caving in the air. Papillon despairs into a weep that becomes a sleep within seconds. Then, in what seemed and felt like moments, rumble, crack, shake. Papillon wakes to the grumbling belly of their rocket ship, leaving the ground it had been resting on. Could it be? They could not believe the ground was telling the truth. Thank you. That's my introductory chapter. <laughs> if that's compelled you to, to get the book, I will leave my email address and I can sign you up to um, the list for when the book is all done. And I've illustrated it myself as well. So that's what we're waiting on, just final illustrations. So if you would like to read it, then please do. Um, and then I will read you just one, uh, the start of the chapter, if that's okay, if I have time. That's right, perfect. So the first chapter is called Mirror House and the Rainbow Meteor. So it sort of travels, there's like a, a sketch of the, the map and it sort of travels through space um, through the chapters. Um, so this is the first place that they find, which is Mirror House and the Rainbow Meteor. And these are all poems that I've written since I was young <laughs> about being gay. Um, so I'm, I'm queer. With the catching of a breath, Papillon watches the colours of the changing world around them peel away. Fading greens to darken blues to blackness, much like the changing of the paintbrush. They had done it. Flown away from the fear of sorry, the anger of silence, the overwhelming underwhelm of being happy in sadness. They were a whole masterpiece from home and ahead of them, a blank canvas. Dark speckled with stars like freckle, freckles, Papillon's eyes start to catch up with them. Connecting the stars like dot to dots, Papillon navigates their cardboard ship towards the ever so far yet never closer hope star, dancing at the heart of Aquarius. This was it. With a second caught breath, Papillon presses their paper pedal and propels towards the day they had yet to unpeel. En route to this new day, Papillon spots what seemed to be a meteor dressed in technicolor. It was rough around the edges, seemed scuffed and spun and scrambled, yet across its surface glistened blues, purples, yellows, all enunciated by the nearby sun. Filled with intrigue, Papillon decides on a pit stop on the colorful conundrum. The unanswered question never did sit right with them. With a grumble of the paper rocket's belly, Papillon landed with a clunk into the small blue crater. Step. This was a land their feet had never known, yet felt walked upon before from crater to core, unknowingly familiar. Step. 
I feel as though I've been here before. Papillon began walking across the meteor's terrain. The sun starlight settled on technicolor rock as far as the eye could see. Papillon's eyes molded into kaleidoscopes of wonder and a heart so full it could burst and bleed the colors it could see for miles around. On their travels, Papillon passed unsteady rock of bleeding color, potholes of red, blue, green, hills of yellow and violet under their climbing feet. This was a place of warmth. This was a place of pain. After climbing what seemed like the hundredth hill, Papillon came to the top, jaws dropped, eyes trying to stay in their sockets, hearts nearing a stop. There is no way I could explain to you what mesmerizing is. You would need to breathe it for yourself. There was something shadowing the sun in the distance, a house, no longer than their tinfoil home, in fact, identical in shape and its tired eyes for windows. This house was standing patiently in the epicenter of all colours combined, but the striking difference in this house to home, this house was made of mirrors. Overflowing with fascination, Papillon chose to run. Papillon splashes through technicolour puddles, grazes their knee on a green rock, catches their breath on pink air. Each step splashes on their spacesuit, soaking their body head to toe in rainbow shades that Papillon remains unfazed to the, in the journey. This once again felt familiar, felt comfortable, felt real. As they arrived at the house, Papillon realized there was no door, no staircase, bedroom, angry eyebrows or sunken fireplaces. Only stood there, coated in rainbow, staring back, both silent and smiling. Thank you. Spoken, mate.